Good morning. Hello, everyone. Hey, it's Scott with Heritage Farms, Texas. Well, today is the day. I don't know if you can tell, but it's been raining all weekend. It's wet. It's too wet to mess with the concrete on the footings for the electric gate. So what we're going to do today, my ultimate display of cheapness. That's right. I'm going to make my own gate to go across here. That's a 14 foot opening. So when the gate's fully closed, we want it to be at least one foot or to the middle of each of those columns. So we're gonna make a 16 foot gate. It's gotta have rollers on the bottom and it's gotta have some type of mechanism that actually uh, will allow it to be pulled down the uh, alleyway or the concrete sidewalk via chain on the remote opener. So, let's walk up to the uh, Heritage Farms fabrication shop. Ooh, AKA the garage. All right. So this is what we're working on. So some of these gates would literally cost you, at the cheapest, if you had one fabricated at the uh, fence place, would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of 1500 to 1800 bucks to have it fabricated, ready to roll. Well, here's what, when I was joking about my cheapness factor of this, I can do it a lot better than that. Well, I don't know about better. I do have a welder, have a nice little Lincoln arc welder, the Weld Pack 100, very pleased with it. Uh, but this is what we're gonna do. Each one of these panels are eight foot long and they're $60 a piece. So I'm into this for 120 bucks on that end. So what we're gonna do down here is I've got some metal, which is uh, basically three quarter inch metal, which will slide inside of this bottom one inch rail. That's gonna allow this thing to come together. It's gonna give it a lot of uh, strength, if you will. I'm gonna put one on the top and one on the bottom. I'm gonna have to do something, this gap's a little bit off, so one of these is gonna have to be cut down so that when they come together, it's the same distance as that. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Then let me show you what else we're gonna do. <laughs> of course, these are all packaged in groups of two. So we'll just take this one, there you go. So, Then on the ends here, we'll come in and we'll put a nice heavy bar on the ends to dress the gate up. Of course, we'll cut it off up there where it's nice and level. And uh, then the last thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna fabricate this angle iron. And this angle iron may be a little bit too thick for what I wanna do, so I may have to find something else but we have to, in essence, form a rail because there's two rollers that will fit on either side of that angle iron to keep the gate straight when it's going up and down. So that's what we're working on. Hey, hope you enjoy this. More to come. Okay, well, we're making progress. So what have we done? Well. The first thing we did was we measured to make sure what the gap was in between here, which is four inches between every one of these pickets. Well, the end panels were gonna be a little bit different, so we had to cut off a little piece off of each one so that when these are pushed together, it would actually be four inches in the center of this gate, just like it was everywhere else. So, this right here is that three, so you have a one inch top rail, and this right here is three quarter inch tube metal. And uh, so what we did was we cut a piece, basically we have four feet running in this thing. So we have two feet that direction, two feet this direction. Same thing up here at the top, put a little center mark in there. So I'm about to close this gate together. And when I close the gate together or push it together, this will actually come together, it'll seam up, We'll do one weld in the middle, top and bottom, and uh, we have a pretty good skull. Now, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here on the inside of the bottom and the inside of the top, and probably for a foot on each side, we're gonna put some, uh, we're gonna drill some pilot holes, 
put some self-tapping metal screws up through the bottom. The purpose for that is it will hold this uh, internal metal tubing to the top rail since we can't get inside of it to weld. And then right here, we'll just have a nice center weld on the top and bottom. So that should give you some strength to keep this gate rigid all the way across and uh, should look pretty decent for uh, a poor boy. So once again, my goal here is to build this whole entire gate for about $300 versus paying somebody else $1,800 or $2,000 to build it. So that's what we're doing today. Hey, I'll keep you informed. Okay, well, we are back at it. What we have done now is we have put that basically that four foot piece of fence or three quarter inch pipe inside of this top rail. So what we did was we came back. These are the greatest things ever if you haven't used them. They're a little expensive, but they're self tapping drill bit lag bolts. And if you look at that, when you use a uh, three eight socket on the end of your 20 volt DeWalt, but what I did here, since I wanted to make sure the holes were perfect, I drilled a pilot hole through the first level of metal. Then I used the self-tapping to come inside and actually ink. Okay, guys, well, and girls, and ladies, and gentlemen, dogs, puppies, canaries, cats, whatever's watching today. Uh, all right, well, the project this morning was turning two eight-foot panels into one 16 foot panel, the poor boy redneck method of gate building. So what we did right here, once again, you can see where we put that internal piece of three quarter inch metal through the one inch tubing. We put some self tapping screws or lag bolts on one side. We put a weld in the middle. Now keep in mind, I'm an amateur, but hey, I can dirt dob with the best of them. Did the same thing on this side, shot it with a little uh, Rust-Oleum paint. Gonna let that dry. We'll flip this thing over. And then we're moving to the next step, which the next step is welding the fancy in pieces on. Give the gate a little bit more substance, make it look a little more attractive. Plus I swear we'll put a piece of angle iron where we can attach our chain to actually open and close the gate with the gate opener. So, there's your update. Okay, here's an update, guys. So, uh, on the one end, so this is the front of the gate. You can see we welded the corners on there. This will be, this will have a nice little end cap on it. Don't look at my welds, I'm not perfect. But we're walking down the middle here. You can kind of see right there's the middle splice. Hey. I'm an amateur. It is what it is. All right, guys. But anyway, I'm still happy with a $300 gate versus a uh, $1,500 or $1,800 gate. I'm just cheap like that. So right there is the wheels or the wheel housing where the actual wheel will go. And we have these. Oh, let me get it. Very, very, very heavy, heavy duty. These guys right here. I kid you not, are like 15 to 18 pounds a piece. See the V groove in the middle of them? So once you put that V track down on your driveway, that is solid. The weight of the gate will actually hold the, uh, the V groove down on the track. And uh, it's pretty hard to get it off actually. So anyway, there's my 16 foot gate. It's not perfect, but uh, we're making progress. I still got to figure out what to do on this end and we may have to wait just a little while because this is where all the end, where the magic happens. We have to get the chain attached on this end. We also have to have the upper track depending on what we decide to use to hold it in place, but uh, we'll figure it out. So uh, we'll get there, but hey, just wanted to give you an update. Well, here you go. It is now uh, Sunday night and we're pretty much almost through with the gate. I don't know, we're 80% of the way. So we have the end piece welded on and the welds are painted. We got the wheel installed. 
Right here in the middle is where we splice the two together. Notice how the spacing is exactly the same. Hard to tell where it's at if you didn't know the rest of the story. Another wheel. Now this down here is where it got a little bit interesting. So from here over, this gate is 16 feet, but basically we added on an extra uh, three feet or so on the back end. And the reason for that is you need that extra space for the chain on the, uh, the opener and also for the uh, top rail. So when the gate's in the closed position, the gate's, the opening's 14 feet, the gate itself up to here is 16 feet. So you got a foot on each side behind the column, but then you needed this extra space back here to hold the gate in the upright position with the rollers that go on the top. And then also uh, the chain that actually runs across the bottom. So it doesn't look like it, but that is a full day of work right there crawling around on the garage floor, grinding all of your joints, welding all of your joints, cleaning up your welds when you're a bad welder like I am. And then of course, priming, painting, and getting everything set up. So once again, uh, I think I'll be about $300 in this project. And I'm pretty sure they would have charged me about, I don't know, maybe 1600 as high as $2,000 probably for that gate. You just never know, man. If somebody else had to make it, and it probably wouldn't be up to the standards. The only other thing I have to do now is on this top rail, we're gonna have to come back and weld a piece of angle iron on the top, which is really gonna give it a lot more uh, stability. It's lin linear, very strong, but if you were to pick it up in the middle right now, it would probably bend because of the weight, and you only have that one inch top rail. So uh, I think it's all gonna be good and uh, we'll see. But uh, for those of you who don't know, that's where it's going, right there in between those two brick columns and it's gonna slide to the right. Uh, let me tell you what, man, I'm just a big fan of that little Lincoln welder. That thing does great work. And if you ever need help holding uh, two pieces of metal together when you get ready to weld, those little corner magnets are outstanding. So anyway, there you go. Heritage Farms Fab Shop, AKA the garage. But I think we're well on our way to uh, getting this gate fabricated. Thanks guys. Okay guys, well, here is what is called the gate hardware. And this is actually pretty slick, man. This thing will actually come up. This is a bad example, but this thing will be bolted or welded onto a post kind of like that. And what this thing will do is it'll come down here and you can't see it, but we have a piece of angle iron on the bottom down here. And this thing will actually go down there. So it'll hold like this and it will ride in this angle iron channel that we are welding down this side. And you can see we're working with brand new metal but even so, you can be off. I mean, metal fluctuates, it's got little bends in it. Hey, why don't you check something out, man? Now, I'm an amateur. Never claimed to be a welder. But we'll skip some of the bad ones. Oh, go to a good one. There's a good one. Look at that. That's a pretty good bead. You know, I'm learning. Dirt dobbing, whatever you want to call it. But uh, for the most part, I think that metal's gonna hold. So as you can imagine, this thing was what? 16, 17, 18, 19 feet long. Uh, when you stood it up, it had a little bit of wobble to it. But now that we've added this three inch by two inch angle iron, which is gonna hold this up. So when this thing's out there, that gate is gonna be perfectly straight. It's not gonna wobble. And what'll happen, this is the stuff you use on the actual ground. So you'll have that wheel on the bottom of the gate that rolls on this track, the weight of it, and this will hold it in place. It's a pretty slick setup. I'm pretty pumped. The more I've worked on this, I'm not sure I could have got this gate built for $2,000. But anyway, hey, I'm pretty pumped. We're making progress, more info to follow. Okay, in the last video I showed where I was just finishing welding this three inch wide top rail or angle iron, as you can see. So it's gonna give this gate a real nice finish on the top. When you look down the top of it, it's three inches wide. 
Plus it gives it a ton of strength. You can even see here, we finished out that little, uh, made a little end cap, welded that all in. Uh, so I'm pretty happy. So we just put a coat of primer on this just to kind of give it that finished look. But I uh, thought I'd give you just a little bitty update. So we're really close. We'll put the end caps on, put the wheels on it. We'll stand it up. I've got to do some touch up paint and some miscellaneous places. And at this point, we're ready to roll it out to the uh, concrete slab once it's poured. Right now it's raining in North Texas. So really this is the perfect time to work on this in the garage. So we'll get the wheels on it, stand it up. And when the weather permits, we'll get the concrete poured. We'll take it out there. The only thing left to do is we'll have to weld a couple of brackets, one on each end for the drive chain to connect to. Hey, and other than that, we're off to the races. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hey, thanks for watching guys. Glory be to God. If you're not a member, hey, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, leave us a comment. Well, you would love to hear from you.